So the first thing that we're going to be looking at um, is the distinction between distance versus displacement. It's a slight distinction, but it is definitely important to know. Um, so displacement is the final minus the initial point and it's path independent versus distance, which is the total amount traveled and it's path dependent. Um, and so we'll take a look at an example that will definitely make it a lot simpler. So say we have um, this path that we took, okay? um, and I started from this point and I went A, B, C, and then to D and then back to A. So this is my initial and this is my final point. So what would the displacement be? If I, if I ask what the displacement is, so and let's just assume all these are one meter. Well, the displacement is the final minus the initial, so it's zero meters. The distance, however, is just how much I traveled. So the total amount that I traveled, which is four meters. So we can see that distance and displacement, although for the most part, is not gonna make a difference, but in certain cases, especially when you make the same changes back, it will make a huge difference. And we see that with velocity and speed. So speed is distance over time, not just displacement. Um, and velocity is the speed, including some type of direction. Um, so, you know, if I'm going, say, north at 10 meters per second versus south at 10 meters per second, okay, um, my speed may be the same. My speed is both 10 meters per second. Um, my velocity is very different. My velocity is 10 meters per second north and 10 meters per second south. Okay, so the speed with direction, um, that's where velocity is different in these cases. So here's an example. I travel five meters north in five seconds. What is my velocity and what is my speed? Um, so let's just see. So velocity equals the amount we traveled over the time. So five meters over five seconds, one meters per second. So is that the velocity or is that the speed? So this by itself would be the speed. And if we were to look at the velocity, we would just have to have the speed plus a direction. So one meters per second, and then we need a direction. Well, it said in the question that it's going north. So now we're gonna look at acceleration. Um, so acceleration is the velocity um, per unit time. Um, so it's the change in velocity, actually. And so an example of this would be, um, I'm on a train going 50 meters per second and I slow to a complete stop in 10 seconds. What is my acceleration? Um, and one thing to note about all these is that there's a difference between a positive velocity and a negative velocity as well as a positive acceleration and a negative acceleration. And we'll see that here. So the first thing we do is we say that our initial speed is 50, right? And our final speed is zero, right? Because we went to a complete stop. So our equation is delta velocity over time. So delta velocity is always the final minus the initial. All right? And then this is over our time, and our time we took is 10. So we see that it's negative 5, and then our units would be meters per second over second, or meters per second squared. All right? So um, that's pretty much what it is. Negative 5 meters per second squared is our acceleration. So the next thing we're going to look at um, is pretty important. Um, it's being able to read a graph um, and interpreting that into um, you know, velocity and acceleration. And this is something that the MCAT loves to test um, because it doesn't so much test you on um, numbers or manipulating numbers. It's just manipulating graphs and seeing if you can interpret them. So in this question, it gives you a graph, distance versus time. And it says in each of the areas, so in each of these um, you know, locations or segments of time, um, is the velocity negative, positive, or is it zero, and also the acceleration. Um, so I guess the easiest way to figure this out um, is, well, what is the relationship between velocity and distance? So velocity is the derivative of the displacement over time. Right, And all that means is that it's the same thing as the slope. So velocity is the slope of the distance versus the time graph. Okay? Same thing with acceleration is the slope of the velocity versus time. Right? So that's one thing to keep 
track of is knowing that you know for the MPI you don't actually need to know um, derivatives you don't need to know anything like that but this is the only thing that is somewhat calculus related is we need to know slopes so velocity is the slope of the graph of distance versus time and acceleration is the slope of velocity versus time all right so let's think about that right here so we have this graph right there um, in this location if we were just to look at velocity the slope uh, remember is um, the rise over run so let's write that again so slope for if we forgot equals rise over run y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 so something like this would have a positive slope something like this would have a negative slope and something like this would have a zero slope right um, so we'll see that right here so in this first case um, would you say that a has a positive negative or zero slope we would say that for sure it has a positive slope um, and in B we would say that this has a zero slope C this one's a little tricky but it's still going in the positive direction it just may not be going um, as straight as we would have liked so it's still positive um, and D would be negative Okay, so those are for the velocity. So that's for the velocity. But a good way to think about this, since we're going all the way to acceleration, is let's graph a velocity versus time plot. Okay, um, and this will help us when we have to make acceleration because it's hard to uh, find if the acceleration is going to be positive, negative, or zero just from the distance versus time. So let's do that. So it's not important that we know the exact numbers. It's important to know whether or not it's negative, positive, or zero, and if it's flat or if it's going in a line. So we'll see that right here. Um, so this right here has a positive slope, and if we note here, if we broke these up into little segments, we would know that the slope is exactly the same at every single point in time. So we know it has to be a straight line like that, right? And if we got B, we know it's zero, and we know it's always zero. If we broke this up into little segments of time, it would always be the same. This one's a little bit trickier. Um, the way we know that it's positive, we know that it has a positive slope, but we don't know really what it is. But we do know at this point it has a zero slope, right? Because it's about to go to zero. So this is zero. So we know at um, time three it has to be zero. And at this point it's fairly positive. It has a slope um, like that, right? And it slowly goes down and down and down. So we know that the graph has to look something like that, right? And then D has a negative slope. So we know that it has to be flat like that, right? So that's how we got between the velocity um, versus time versus the distance versus time. That's how we got that graph. And so the next thing that we want to know is how do we get the acceleration from this graph? Well, we do the same thing. We say that um, what's the acceleration at each specific point? Well, we know this one's a flat, so it has to be zero. This one's also flat, so it has to be zero. This one, though, is negative, right? Because we had a negative slope going down. But this final one, zero as well. So if they were to ask us, what is the velocity and acceleration? Is it negative, positive, or zero? Well, here we know it's positive, zero, positive, and negative. Here we know it's zero acceleration now, zero, negative and zero right and so if we we see back here um, it, it should make sense it, it's hard to just go straight from distance versus time all the way to acceleration um, but it's something that we have to be comfortable doing and the only way to really do that is if we saw this distance versus time to velocity versus time if we don't know calculus that is